Welcome to the Red Jacket Club. My name is Andy. I'm here with my friend Brendan, and this is where we talk Cardinals baseball. It is Sunday, March 5th, and we are recording this after the Cardinals take a brutal loss to the Mets. 7-1. It sounds like people didn't show up to play baseball today when they were scheduled to, but um, before that, I will just uh, ask Brendan here, how you doing? Um, we're getting another week closer to opening day. Uh, how are you feeling about spring training so far? And, uh, what are your, what are some of your thoughts? Uh, well, I'm doing really well. And, uh, it was just another spring training day today. Uh, yeah, kind of lackadaisical on the offense, but we'll talk a little bit about that, um, in a second, but first off, uh, St. Louis city, I'm repping the, uh, the shirt and you're repping the hat, uh, yeah. that they had their first game, uh, in St. Louis last night. Did you go to the block party? I did not go to the block party. I had a trivia night, so I was uh, I was at the trivia night. And in between rounds, they would throw it up on the on the big screen that they had, and I was also hiding my phone and watching it most of the time too. So did you subscribe um, to Apple TV? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, okay, because yeah. yeah, that obviously you have to be a subscriber to watch some of the games, which is yeah. kind of unfortunate. So I have a kind of weird story of how that all happened. So we went to the block party. But we don't have tickets, so we're pretty excited to watch the game. Like right outside the stadium, there's this big screen that we were assuming was going to show the game. But as soon as the game started, like they they showed all the pregame activities and like the players were on the field. As Mm. soon as it started, they they stopped the video. And everyone was like, what the hell? Like, why? Why are you guys not showing it? So I don't know. There's probably some kind of licensing issue or something there. Uh, but unfortunately, we couldn't watch it outside the stadium. So we watched a little bit uh, in Maggie O'Brien's right across the street. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know. It, just hearing the crowd from outside was a pretty cool thing to hear. Yeah, seeing all the videos was was pretty crazy. Um, it's I, I wish I could have been downtown. Um, but, you know, I, I watched that first game, too. And even though there were only like 150 St. Louis uh, fans there it was still the same kind of energy that i saw um from the video last night so yeah i'm yeah, excited I've, I've never been like a really big soccer fan but i mean now i might as well you know yeah i always played did you ever play when you were younger just like on school teams uh, or just probably like one or two like seasons yeah. but nothing nothing serious we always played when we were younger it was my dad's favorite sport so um it wasn't like a forced upon us thing we we liked playing it but um just uh, wasn't my favorite thing. I'd be talking about St. Louis City SC if it was. <laughs> We're mm-hmm. talking Cardinals, but um, I, I always like soccer, and it's it's actually it's really cool that it it has come to St. Louis, and it seems well deserved. And it's crazy also that they've scored six goals across two games. Like, yeah, that's that's I, it, that's an anomaly. That doesn't. Happen. I will I will say we are we've gotten pretty dang lucky. Oh, the, the first two games. Yeah. Uh, I, if I were, you know, I, I like to play devil's advocate sometimes. Uh, if I were, you know, looking at the opposing side or the opposing argument, I'd say that uh, we haven't looked so good so far because there hasn't really there's there's only been one goal that's been like, oh, OK, like that was that was a nice goal. You know, other other than that, there's only been, I don't know, I, I some own Cla- goals and Klaus's goal stuff. from the first game was really yeah. good. Um, and then, uh, I'm trying to think we've, we've had two passes right to us at the 18, <laughs> which is yeah. insane. That, that is lucky. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, it, it's, it's storylines. It's great. It's, it's awesome that like they were able to win their first game ever and then able oh, to yeah. win this game ever at home. So, yeah. um, couldn't ask for anything more, but let's talk sure. baseball, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, that's yeah, why we're here. Sure. Yep. Um, right now, uh, as we're sitting, like I said, uh, today's game did come and pass, and um, it seems like guys got at bats and, and pitchers got innings, but it wasn't very exciting. I unfortunately wasn't able to watch, so uh, I'll let you talk about it in, in your update. But 
Um, as far as Cardinal news is concerned, it sounds like Jack Flaherty is having a slow start to the spring. It sounds like he will get three innings or 45 pitches tomorrow, whichever comes first, uh, to try and loosen up. But he has not pitched, uh, and he was supposed to pitch yesterday. Um, but, you know, it keeps getting pushed back just because of these flu-like symptoms. Hopefully he's okay. This is a guy that we both kind of want to uh, pop off this season. And uh, I know that he really wants to get out in the field, and it sounds like it it's just not happening at the moment. The other pitcher to start his first start on Monday is Steven Matz. This will be kind of refreshing to see how he uh, goes in pitches. I think he's getting the same restraints, 45 pitches or three innings, whichever comes first. Um, so that's really the big, big updates is that those guys are starting to get loose and take the mound here soon. Um, how about you hit me with uh, with a spring training update? Yeah, so some updates uh, from last episode that we weren't able to cover, obviously. Uh, Jordan Walker had his two-home run game yesterday, I believe, right? Yeah. And I'm sure everyone has seen that. The guy just keeps hitting, and I'm still not going to say that we're wrong just yet, but he is 9 for 21 in spring training, and he's going to make it a tough call uh, when spring training is all said and done. A couple other guys that are doing pretty well. Uh, Nolan Gorman, I like what I like what I see from him. Nolan Arenado, obviously, he's just going off. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt, obviously, he's he's going off as well. Uh, not too surprised about that. The number two prospect, uh, Mason Wynn, he's also doing well still, getting his base hits, stealing some bases, and uh, doing his thing at shortstop. Other than that, the only kind of big struggle that I'm seeing so far uh, with anyone over 10 at bats, well, I guess I guess a couple guys. I got three guys that are currently struggling. Tyler O'Neill, he's currently two for 14. Uh, we don't want to be too concerned about him because I know that you're high on him for this season, and a lot of people are. Uh, Carlson is two for 10, and C- Contreras got his first Cardinal. A spring training hit so he's one for ten uh, other than that everything seems to be going okay um mm-hmm. pitching wise we got dakota hudson he he did okay he got shelled with seven hits but only one and run so he's doing all right miles michaelis is, definitely looks the best wayno has been struggling uh his second start wasn't very good again Montgomery went today. He went three innings, four in runs. So, you know, take that how it is. Uh, other than that, nothing really comes to mind. Uh, do you have anything that comes to mind at all when it comes to stats before we dive into uh, the World not Baseball re- Classic? Not really stats, just what I've heard um, from the Twitter sphere. It sounds like Adam Wainwright's dealing with some soreness, uh, in, I think in his back or an oblique. And that's part of the reason why he's not able to reach the velocity that he kind of needs in order to make sure that his off speed is reliable this season. Um, I asked you about it last episode and, uh, I know that we both kind of pushed it off, but it does seem like age is starting to get to him. Um, I hope it's not starting to get to him too bad. Uh, but it does concern me that he's going into a more competitive, mindset now with the world baseball classic and not really taking it slow and um working through it in spring training that's a little concerning to me um in terms of jordan walker i mean what else could you ask for this guy i think you tweeted it out that he um he said in the winter warm-ups that he's going to make everything out of this spring training it's his biggest um uh opportunity that he's had in his career and he's i'll tell you making the most of it so I, I don't know. He I think he's swaying me a little bit more than he is you in terms of us being wrong, that the Cardinals should wait and give this guy some time. Um, I The first thing was is that I, most of his hits were coming off of Johnny Cueto. So it was like, OK, yeah, he can hit one pitcher, but now he's starting to hit like every pitcher. So, yeah, um, he's uh, he's really proven that he's the guy that he said or everybody's saying that he is. Um, and and he's he's doing it very well. Um, yeah. Other guys, uh, I think it it just it's going to take time. And that's what spring training's for. But those were the those were the big things that stood out this past week. Yeah, I mean, we'll keep watching Jordan Walker at his best. Hopefully he keeps it up. And then, yeah, we talked about the 40 man roster and stuff like that. So I don't know. We'll just continue to track that progress because obviously we won't know 
if he will make the club until you know a few more weeks down the yeah. road, maybe even more than that. But we'll see. Right. So, well, and the we can just jump right into the next topic because most of the guys that are on the Cardinals that are going to the World Baseball Classic are leaving tomorrow, if I understand correctly. So that's Adam Wainwright. That's uh, Miles Michaelis. That's uh, Jesus. Uh, Nolan Arenado, Paul Goldschmidt. Those guys are heading over for uh, Team USA. Uh, other players that are still committed are, are going as well. And um, I guess what we just want to talk about today is is how those players will impact their teams. Who's probably got the best team and the odds of, of winning the tournament. Um, I guess, Brendan, do you want to run down the pools and then some of the rules and regulations that go into the tournament itself? Yeah, so there are four pools, pool A through D, and basically the top two, or it's a round robin in each pool, and the top two in each pool continue on to quarterfinals, and then they continue on and play uh, a one-game matchup, so it's not like a best best of five or anything, it's, it's do or die after pool play, and they will play a team from a separate pool, and then the quarterfinals, obviously, you get down to the sem- semifinals and then the championship, all one game. So that's kind of uh, intense for sure. And then when it comes to the rules, the biggest thing here, the biggest thing to note is that the the rules that the players have been trying to adapt to in spring training are not adopted in the World Baseball Classic. So no more pitch clock. Uh, the shifts will be allowed, which I'm curious how if managers are going to be like, oh, we don't want to mess with what we've been trying to learn. So that'll be kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. I think we will probably see a lot of shifts, but uh, I don't know. It, it is funny. I, I wish they did adopt those rules, but yeah. they well, didn't. And another thing that is interesting now that I think about it is like, do these Asian teams or, or Japanese team, China, Korea, do they shift a lot? Because it's a different style of game. It's a more contact-based game over there. So I, I guess it would make sense if they would shift, but I don't know if they actually do. Um, I don't so know. So it could not be a part of their their gameplay. Um, so that could be like half of the uh, the managers already not wanting to shift in general just because they don't normally. Um, but I don't know. Right, and we also don't have like the scouting on like all these players i i guarantee the analytics aren't going to be crazy in depth when it comes you know you let's say mm-hmm. you get a lefty from japan and like i mean i'm sure they'll have basic numbers on them like oh this is a really good hitter but i mean would you shift a player like donovan you know probably not you know that we don't i don't think they'll have those like analytics so mm-hmm uh, so yeah, I don't know. We might not see the shift as much as I'm thinking, but I feel like USA being the kind of they. I feel like they were the ones that kind of invented this shift almost. I, I mean, right? Like I don't. I don't think yeah. Japan probably did. But anyway, I don't know. The rules are not ad- adopted, and so that's probably the biggest thing. Um, the other thing is just the pool play ranking. Uh, it goes by wins, and then wins against tied teams. Runs allowed divided by defensive outs, and then all kinds of things that I don't think we're gonna quite get to. But the the basic thing is, is the way you make it out of pool play is you gotta win, and then if you uh, if you're tied with other people, it's you know the head to head matchup stuff like that. So pretty standard stuff, uh, and that's kind of all I have on the rules. Oh, and short games. Um, so there are short games. So there's uh, ten runs after seven is a short game, as well as fifteen runs after five, which I think we're going to see a lot of short games when it comes to some of these teams like the Czech Republic, which we'll get into in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I, I think in pool play, at least, we'll see a, quite a few short games. Awesome. Then let's just get right into it and start talking about some of these rosters. Um, we'll run through these pretty quickly, and then we'll get to some of, one, some of the ones that we'll probably – stay a little bit more uh, in-depth on. But uh, just first off the bat, based off of how I read these from the website that I found, um, uh, the notable players from the Netherlands, I only really found one, and that's Xander Bogarts. Um, I believe he's still committed to play, and he's obviously going to be a big asset for the Padres this year. 
Um, strong shortstop, uh, not necessarily anything wrong with his his game of play. Um, has a lot of power too, so it's a big asset to the Netherlands. But other than that, I don't, I didn't see anybody else that could really uh, affect that team from the MLB. Um, in terms of Cuba, um, it looks like Luis Robert is uh, going to be playing, or does he really go by Robert? Is that how you pronounce? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. I think that, Luis Robert. that actually is Luis Robert. Yeah. Uh, is going to be on that team. And um, I know him as a power hitter. I know him also as being kind of injury prone. So I don't, I can't remember how, how many games he played last season, but obviously a big power asset there. Um, going to Italy, we have our first Cardinal and Andre Pallante. Um, the <laughs> team Italy was apparently uh, constructing the Cardinals on how they uh, should use Andre Pallante in spring training. Um, in terms huh. of his his bullpen, funny, and I didn't know that. Yeah, I saw something that said like he can only throw forty five pitches. So if he's coming out the <laughs> pen, like don't let him throw more. Um, and so uh, he'll he'll be coming out of the pen. He looked really good for the Cardinals the other day when when he came in. So I'm sure he'll be a really good asset there. And another notable player that's pretty interesting is Matt Harvey. Um, I don't know if everybody remembers Matt Harvey, but he was uh, the Mets star pitcher back when they I think they made it when he was he was there in 2013 when they made that World Series run, if that sounds right. Um, sounds but it's just right. it's weird to see his name back in a lineup again because um, he's just like he fell off. He was like at the highest height and then he just fell straight down mm-hmm. um, and bounced around a little bit and hasn't been in the majors for a while. But. And somehow Harvey's an Italian name. I don't know. He's got some heritage, I guess, that's <laughs> putting him over there. Um, I I don't believe uh, when we go to Panama next, I don't think that Ivan Herrera is still committed to play. Mm. Um, I, I didn't look that up or update our list. Um, and uh, there are other Cardinals. There are uh, minor league Cardinals. Uh, Will Fre- Wilfredo Perea and L.J. Jones. Those were listed as Cardinal players from the minor league camp that are going to be participating on behalf of Can- Panama. Um, now we get to one of Real the Real quick, t- before you move on yeah. to uh, the, one of the bigger teams, yeah. uh, I just want to note that that was Pool A that you uh, that you you described there. So Pool A consists yeah. of, uh, well, one team that we don't have, Chinese Taipei. We probably couldn't pronounce the names anyway, so that's okay. <laughs> uh, Netherlands, Cuba... Italy and Panama. So that's pool A. I don't know enough about him. I know you named off some of those players, but I mean, if I were to just guess, I would say Cuba and what do you think? Cuba and Italy make it out or I don't know. I think Cuba and Italy probably have the strongest chance. Um, But at the same time, there aren't like it's so sporadic as to who's on these teams. So it's not like they're getting a lot of help from the, the American teams. Um, and usually that's what's going to help the like not to sound <laughs> super American, but we are and the game's an American game. So um, it just seems as though MLB offers the most help in that in that regard. And like I can see Cuban players being very good. I can see, um, I guess, Panama being good, too. But at the same time, I don't know if Taiwan or or uh, or the Netherlands have much to offer. Um yeah, so I'm gonna say my lock is Cuba, and uh, I'm gonna go with the Netherlands. Make it out. Okay, that Cuba sounds good. Netherlands for me. We can go on to Pool B. Uh, yeah, I can list that off uh, before we start talking about. It. So it's Japan, South Korea, Australia, China, and the Czech Republic. Um, we can list out some of those notable players from Japan. Japan has Lars Newtbar, our own Lars Newtbar. Um, from the Padres, you Darvish, Angels, Shohei Otani, the Cubs, uh, Seiya Suzuki. Um, but I think he just got hurt recently. So yeah, I don't yeah. know if, if he's going to yeah. be participating. Um, and then the Red Sox, Masataka Yoshida, who they just uh, acquired this, this offseason. Um, they're all participating for Team Japan. And this is one of those teams that is going to be very strong. Obviously, they have one of the best players in MLB right now in Shohei Otani. But then they also also have Yu Darvish uh, as a strong pitching asset. 
Um, Lars Newbar is is the first American born Japanese player to play on that team. And, you know, I mean, Japan just has so many other good players like they're they're a pool of players that um, is always competitive. So this is one of the the stronger teams out of the in this pool itself in Pool B. Um, South Korea has Tommy Edmond um, and Hey uh, Hey Song Kim Hey Song Kim from the Padres. Um, and then I listed here just lots of KBO players. Another another country that just has a good pool of baseball players. Um, USA is not no they're not pool. yeah they're not in that one so i think the rest of the pool didn't have many notable players it was yeah. just those three teams so uh australia china czech republic you said you wanted to talk about the czech republic <laughs> yeah i've got this uh this clip that i saved that's so funny because they were interviewing <laughs> czech republic players and mm -hmm. they were like yeah i'm a salesman I work in sales for five yeah. days a week, and it's like, dang, dude, like, if me and you were Czech, then we could go play for the national team, man. Like, yeah. like they don't, I don't know, it's it's hilarious. So it'll be fun to watch just these regular guys. I bet none of them are in shape. They're just there to have fun, I bet, and they're mm -hmm. playing against, like, Shohei Otani. <laughs> Imagine yeah. going up to hit against Shohei. I think that's hilarious. So uh, they stand no chance, in my opinion. But you gotta love them. Uh, yeah. All the all these guys working nine to fives have to put in vacation for the World yeah, Baseball the Classic. World baseball classic. Yeah. Uh, um, but. And I think Australia is kind of in the same boat. They they have a decent group of of players, but they they don't often like show up. Um, I I don't feel like Australia is typically the place that people go to scout baseball talent. So um, in Pool B, I think the clear lock is Japan and South Korea to come out of there. Yeah, definitely. I know Australia has a uh, like a league in Australia that mm -hmm. might be pretty solid. I, I think we forgot to mention China's in this pool as well, which don't know much about China. They might be OK, but I would put Australia above China and Czech Republic. So I could see Australia squeezing out one or two wins. Well, especially if it's against China and Czech Republic. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think Australia might be might be decent but yeah definitely i would say japan and korea in this pool is are definitely the two to make it out right so we can move on to pool c it's usa mexico colombia canada and great britain um starting with usa there's a lot of cardinals uh it's paul goldschmidt nolan arenado miles michaelis and adam wainwright uh, we've already kind of talked about Adam Wainwright and his struggles going into the World Baseball Classic, but those other three seem like they'll be great assets to the team. Um, other notable players are Mike Trout, who was named captain, uh, Trey Turner, JT Romuto coming from the Phillies. Uh, Clayton Kershaw is not pitching anymore in the World Baseball Classic. He opted out. I think there was some legal issue or insurance thing that he couldn't get worked out with the Dodgers and all that. Um, but Mookie Betts is in. Uh, Mets, Pete Alonzo, and Jeff McNeil, both very good players, uh, although I don't like to admit it. And then it looks like the Orioles are sending Cedric Mullins, who is a sneaky, sneaky good player. Not, I don't think a lot of people talk about him um, mm -hmm. and how good he is. Um, we'll just run through these other ones real fast. Mexico, the Cardinals are contributing Jojo Romero and Giovanni Gallegos. Uh, Gallegos, get your, uh, your long innings out now while you can. Yeah. Because because you're going to be clocked when you get uh, when you get back. Yeah. The Rays have Randy Rosarena. Blues are, uh, the Blue Jays are sending Alejandro Kirk. The Dodgers are sending Julio Arias. The Brewers are sending Rowdy Telez and Luis Arias. Um, Luis Arias. Ah, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Um, the Sorry. Cardinals uh, for Colombia. The Cardinals are sending Guillermo Zuniga and Oscar Mercado. Um, and the Mets are sending Jose Quintana, who has been struggling a little bit. And I know he was feeling a little tight uh, after his pitching uh, Matt, uh, Matt, uh, innings today. Uh, so I'm sure he, he'll probably still be there. I haven't heard that he's not uh, going to participate. Um, the Red Sox are sending Jorge Alfaro. Uh, and it's weird that the Padres didn't uh, hang on to this guy because he seems pretty good. But... Um, the Red Sox have him now, so that's that. Um, and then Canada is sending Tyler O'Neill, um, big 
big O Canada there. Um, Dodgers are sending Freddie Freeman, and I was kind of surprised that there was no Joey Votto on the list. I, I don't I know if think you heard he's what got he's participating or. I think he's still has stuff going around with his health, uh, and it sounds because I know last year he had a lot of health problems, so he's mm-hmm. probably That's using true. spring training yeah. just to get back on track. I would assume. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That makes sense now. Um, and then for Great Great Britain, um, the Cardinals are sending Joseph King and Matt. Perniak. Um, I think both of those are minor league names. The Reds are saying sending Donovan Benoit or Benoit Benoit. I don't know. Um, Benoit, probably. Yeah, which just sounded like a badass name to me. Um, and then the Dodgers are sending Trace Thompson, who I know is one of their better players over there. So that wraps up Pool C. Um, and obviously, uh, unless like God strikes down and hits enti- the entire team of uh, USA with some type of illness or lightning or whatever, uh, USA is going to break through in that group. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I guess Mexico is probably the next best bet in terms mm-hmm. of who will come out of there. But I, I I'm honestly not sure. I, I guess Canada could give them a run for their money, too. Yeah, definitely USA is a lock here, like you said. I mean, it's the best lineup. It's better than an all-star lineup because you have American and National League teams like mm-hmm. sending their best players. So it's even better than an all-star game. And it's just it's ridiculous, the amount of names that you mentioned. And then probably Mexico, I would say. But then again, I could see like Colombia or maybe Canada. Like, I think that might be a little battle, actually. Um, I would say... The uh, USA team has potential to lose maybe one or two games. I could see Mexico or Colombia squeezing out a win, possibly. I don't know. Maybe not. But um, I could totally see them go undefeated. Uh, the mm-hmm. only team here that really I don't think stands a chance would probably be Great uh, Great Britain because who plays there? You know, Trace. you mentioned Trace Tom- Thompson, who's a solid player for the Dodgers. But, I mean, he just platoons for the Dodgers, so... Uh, how great can they be? But mm-hmm. other than that, I don't really have much to say other than USA is going to take this one. Right. Um, and then in Pool D, the last pool in the tournament, is Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Venezuela, Israel, and Nicaragua. Um, and when we get down to it, uh, Puerto Rico has no Cardinals, but um, obviously Yadier Molina is the head coach of that team. He's going to be managing those guys. Um, the Cubs are sending Marcus Stroman. The Mets have Edwin Diaz. Um, Francisco Lindor um, is also coming from the Mets. The Tigers are sending Javier Baez, and the Red Sox are sending Kike Hernandez. Um, Dominican Republic, uh, which probably has the best chance at Taking, I think Japan, USA, and Dominican Republic are going to be the three big teams in this tournament. Um, the Cardinals are sending Genesis Cabrera, um, the Marlins, Sandy Alcantara, Johnny Cueto, Cueto uh, Brewers are Willie Adamas, Red Sox is uh, Rafael Devers, Blue Jays, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Um, although I think he just he got left off the game. Out. Yeah, he left the game the other day with some injuries. So you're saying that he's not participating anymore? Yeah, no, it's a huge blow for the DR. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, he was he was mashing the ball too in spring training. So that that does yep. suck for them. Padres, Manny Machado, the best third baseman in baseball, um, <laughs> according to MLB Network. <laughs> Mariners are sending Julio Rodriguez. Um, for Venezuela, the Cardinals are sending Luis Garcia. Um, I wasn't able to find anything on him in, in uh, baseball reference. So I think he's a very, very small, uh, like maybe single A guy. Um, the Rockies are sending Herman Marquez. Jose Altuve is going from the Astros. Miguel Cabrera for one last stand with the Tigers. And then uh, Padre, or Padres Braves are sending Ronald Acuna Jr. Um, for Israel, Noah... Mendlinger uh, is apparently coming from the Cardinals. And then Jock Peterson is playing from the San Francisco Giants. So um, those are the big teams that are in Pool D. When it comes to Pool D, I think it, you'd be ridiculous to not take uh, Dominican Republic. 
And then I think it's going to be a mashup between Venezuela and Puerto Rico. But I think Puerto Rico will probably come out on top to, to exit the pool. Yeah, you know, I wish they did this differently because the Dominican Republic, in my opinion, I, w- I want to see the USA and Dominican Republic go in the championship. But the way the pools work is the two winners from pool C and the two, two winners from pool D will play each other in the mm-hmm. quarterfinals. So most likely what's going to happen is the uh, USA will see the uh, uh, Dominican Republic either in quarterfinals or semifinals, mm. uh, most likely semifinals, because they'll probably both end up on top. Right. Uh, so I don't know. I, I wish that they were on different sides of the bracket. Dominican Republic could probably get traded for, like, I don't know, let's say Italy or something, just one of those teams in Pool A, because it's a super weak bracket in Pool A, um, even though the Japan should be able to take care of that side of the bracket. But even like a Dominican Republic against Japan would be cool. But I, I feel like this pool C and D is just loaded with talent. So I wish they did it a little different, but I guess there's probably, it probably has a lot to do about location, I would assume. So what do mm-hmm. I know? But um, yeah, I'm going to lock in the DR as, as the winner of this one. And then I guess Puerto Rico, I mean, it's easy to say Puerto Rico, but I don't know. I I don't really see. I mean, I could see Venezuela taking it, but I don't know. I yeah. on paper, I would say Puerto Rico. Yeah, I I think I'm going with Puerto Rico. I think it just has the better team, um, and a better pool of talent. So I I would imagine that most of the guys that aren't from the MLB would be pretty pretty good at baseball. So, um, I guess in terms of those six teams that we said are probably locked and able to get out of their pool. Um, who do you think is going to end up in the finals? I I got to go with just the USA versus Japan. I mm-hmm. think that's, I mean, we there's too many names on the paper that, you know, that would, uh, it wouldn't make sense for them to get out early. So I'm going to, I already put a bet on DraftKings that the USA is going to win. So I really believe that they have the best lineup and they won it last time, right? Um, defend the title in 2017. I think the right last time was they went. Yeah. Sounds like you're typing. So I think you're yeah. on it. USA won um, over Puerto Rico. And then Japan's last win was in 2009 mm. um, over South Korea. And then in 2013, the Dominican Republic won over Puerto Rico. Um, And I think that's consistent with what you'll see this time around is those three or four teams are going to be like the top contenders here. Um, It's only just a question of, like you said, based on how the brackets are set up, who's going to make it. And I think you're right. I think it's probably going to be between the United States and Japan. I think something would really have to happen to both of those teams in order for somebody else to get out um, ahead of them. Um, Because even though like, It'll probably come down to South Korea and Japan um, in the semifinals from that round or from that side of the bracket. I think Japan's just going to clobber South Korea. Um, And then it's going to be a real, uh, real thing to see what happens between that USA Dominican Republic, because I'm sure there'll be the the semifinal game on that side of the bracket. Um, And that one's going to be tough. But I think USA will come out and, and it'll it'll be between USA Japan. I don't know who's gonna win though. I, I would probably put the same bet down as you did, but I'm not it really is a bet. one game, you know. Yeah. It's coming coming down to one game. And that's right. when it comes to baseball, well really with any sport, one game is pretty tough to like mm-hmm. really tell who's gonna win. So the USA obviously on paper look great and I I think they're gonna win it, but there's always that if factor. You mm-hmm. just don't know, so. Right. Well, I mean, other than that, I don't really have any other thoughts. Other, uh, I mean, just that the fact that um, it's it's happening. It's starting this week. Uh, we're doing this March fifth, and the games start March eighth. Um, Newt Bar and Edmund have been over in uh, in Japan and I guess South Korea for a couple of days now, or at least a week. So they've been over there preparing and everything, and, and games are going to get started. So um, those those games start on the 8th, and then USA's first game is on the 11th. So 
tune in if you're able to watch. Um, I know it's been weird trying to watch baseball games, and most people are complaining that they can't watch spring training games. But, like, man, <laughs> what – what are people doing that they like they're starving for a spring training game? I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of funny how people are overreacting about that. I don't know if you saw Car- the Cardinals tweet when they put out their lineup today, but they were like, hey, who's ready to watch us on TV today? <laughs> yeah. And so I bet, I bet the announcers, they're like, man, we don't want to freaking do this. You know, they they yeah. got to like book the game and everything and uh or do the stats of the game and stuff and there's so many changes they're probably so tired of it yeah but. yeah there aren't enough lines on the sheet in order to to do all the changes that that are out there um but you know i think we can wrap this up we there there isn't much that's been happening around the league i mean a couple of injuries that we've kind of already gone over because they related to our topic today the one big thing that i saw um that hit the internet around the league is poor Joey Gallo cannot shake the shift. Um, you, you said it, you said it here. I was surprised to even have heard the thought, but uh, the guy, for some reason, he can't shake the shift. So uh, what you said was, is you would, you wouldn't be surprised if the left fielder ran straight from left field into shallow right field. And that's exactly what they did against him in a spring training game earlier this week. Um you know, it's just funny to see. It's funny that you called it. Um, I was kind of like, you know, they have the pitch clock. I don't think that they'll waste the time in order to do it. Um, but if I guess if they have a guy who's able to sprint and sprint well and not be tired after that, um, they could give it a try. Um, and they certainly did. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. I think hopefully they'll come to an agreement where they have some kind of like left center and right field lines where, you know, they have to stay in their position. So if the right fielder wanted to come in super shallow, which would defeat the purpose of a uh, right fielder. But um, I don't know. I, I just, uh, I was so happy to get away from the shift. And then, you know, that idea pop, popped in the mind that uh, the left fielder could just play there and leave that whole left field wide open. And it happened in spring training. So the real test is if we're going to see it a lot in the regular season. Hopefully it was just something to test. But like you said, with the pitch clock, I feel like it would be pretty tough. And, I mean, I guess there's an advantage to hit it straight to him after he sprints. That's like a about a 100-yard sprint pretty much. So yeah, he's got to be decently tired when he gets over there. But, yeah, hopefully we don't see too much of that. And, I don't know, moving forward. Right. Um, I don't have anything else. You got anything else that's on your mind before we uh, jump off? No, I'm good to go. I'm just super pumped. The spring training is going super well. We have a lot of excitement with the Cardinals, with Jordan Walker, and then the World Baseball Classic is going to be a ton of fun to watch. Uh, It's finally back to the competitive baseball. You know, in spring training, we try to take everything uh, with a grain of salt and not overreact. And uh, but I think the WBC will be a lot of fun to see some real emotions and real competitors coming out to win Mm -hmm. so yeah i think that's what i'm most excited about it's just to have competitive baseball back because i mean as much as it is fun to watch spring training i mean it's still spring training like uh, i mean i guess people could call me a casual fan for saying it but like it gets boring like after a while you just see like you don't even see pitchers on other teams that you recognize or that are gonna make it out of camp so it's like okay yeah this is great like this isn't indicative of anything so what are we yeah what are we still doing my least favorite thing is that i still have not i'm you know fantasy baseball hasn't started so uh, my usual routine during the season is like wake up check my lineups make sure everyone's good to go and i'm still not there yet so my fantasy yeah. baseball is still like on the mend you know i'm still waiting for that uh but yeah that's that's probably my least favorite thing is, is fantasy baseball is still about a month away yeah freaking crazy man um it's taking longer than i'd like it to be but we'll get there um but with that this has been the red jacket club um tune in to all the baseball that's happening this week we're going to talk about it um we'll talk a little bit about um the world baseball classic as well but next week we hope to have a guest on our first guest um and stay tuned for that uh as as we get prepared to to have them to talk about the Cardinals and his thoughts on on what's coming on in spring training and everything like that. But um, for for now, if you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe if you've made it this far. Um, and then 
Uh, you can find us on Twitter, basically everywhere, red underscore jacket club. Um, and, uh, and we just thank you for listening. This has been fun. Look forward to the World Baseball Classic this week. Um, but thank you guys for listening. Thank you for joining the club. And uh, we'll see you next time.